Jackie Gleason. In what will probably prove to be a very unusual program. And now, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Jackie Gleason. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I uh, think you'll notice that there is no panel tonight. As a matter of fact, there's nothing here except the orchestra and myself. I'd like to modify that. There is one other thing. We have a creed tonight. And the creed is, honesty is the best policy. Now, this program could be the most fascinating you'll ever watch. I know this, that it's the first of its kind. <laughs> and could very easily be the last. <laughs> Well, I said that we didn't have a panel or anything like that. We do have a premise. And the premise is this. Last week, we did a show called You're in the Picture that laid, <laughs> without a doubt, the biggest bomb. <laughs> I'm telling you, friends, that I've seen bombs in my day. <laughs> this would make the H-bomb look like a two-inch salute. <laughs> in our neighborhood, we'd call the atom bomb a scissor. <laughs> this was... Oh, oh, oh. And to show you the element... Uh, what, what luck plays. The element of luck in success. Now, I wasn't supposed to be here last week. I was going out of town. I was going to play some golf, and I was going to watch Palmer make that 12 he got, you know, on that hole. <laughs> and somebody said to me, how would you like to do a show? And they told me about this thing, and I stayed around to do it. Now, I, I didn't have to be here. I could have been somewhere having a nice cruise on a Portuguese ship or something. <laughs> As a matter of fact, if I had been on that ship, I wouldn't be here tonight. <laughs> Ooh. This is a new coffee called Chock Full of Booze. <laughs> Before we go any further to discuss this, uh, catastrophe that took place last week. <laughs> and I'll get some dirtier words to explain it later. <laughs> I would like to tell you that tonight our show is being brought to you by none other friends than L&M Filter Cigarettes. My choice for flavor. Now, unless you're smoking L&M's, all you can do is imagine how good they taste. How much great flavor you can get from a filter cigarette. Not from just one L&M or two or a whole pack. But every time you light up, every time, L&M gives you that flavor. Now, I think you'll agree. So try my smoke, friends. Unlock some flavor. The next time, every time, reach for an L&M because they're the greatest. And now, back to the subject. <laughs> you know, a lot of people might ask, how is it possible 
for a group of trained people in show business. If this happened in a hospital... <laughs> you know, if some doctors botched up a thing like this, this is the end, they carry him out. That's all, Charlie. <laughs> but here we are, all trained people in show business. And the best that you can get. This is... The, no kidding. These are the finest people. And, uh... I imagine that in the group we had, there were about a group of 20, uh, they had combined experience of about 300 years. <laughs> imagine this. And they put this show on, you're in the picture. Well, now I've got to tell you why a thing like that happened. Whoa, that's good coffee. I mean, that's... <laughs> that's a good cigarette. Now, let me explain this to you. The facts of show business are this. Show business is a very strange and intangible endeavor. Now, for instance, put your, yourself in the pla a place of a bank president. Now, suppose a guy walked into you when you were the president of a bank, and he said to you, I want to borrow a million dollars because I'm going to put on a picture with no stars in it. He said, and the plot of the picture is this. An ugly butcher up in the Bronx can't get a date. And it's going to win the Academy Award. <laughs> well, immediately, you know, you step on the emergency bell and uh, you hermetically seal the whole bank. And in 30 seconds, Bellevue was there with the straitjackets akimbo, you know. <laughs> But oddly enough, there was a guy who did borrow some money from a bank, who did put on a picture without any stars in it, and it was about an ugly butcher in the Bronx who couldn't find a date, and the name of the picture was Marty. Now, up to now, it's made about $8 million. So how can you tell, you know? Now, that's a stupid plot that you walk in with. But let's look at the other end of the road. A couple of years ago, about 10 years ago, there was a show, a guy had an idea for a show. He said, here's what we're going to do. He says, we're going to put on a show called Keep Off the Grass. It'll be about Central Park. He said, and we'll get a historian that knows all the funny things that happen in Central Park. And you know, friends, that there's been some funny things. He says, we'll get two geniuses to write the music, and they did. They got Jimmy McHugh and Howard Deans. They said, we'll get the master choreographer of all times, Balanchine. He'll put on the dances. They said, then we'll get stars. We'll get Jimmy Durante, Jane Froman, Ray Bolger, and Ilka Chase. And they did. And they put this show on. I was in it, friends. It closed so fast, I got caught in the doors. <laughs> That's the intangible. Yeah, that isn't the worst flop of I was in worse than that. You know. <laughs> I was in a little uh, legitimate show in summer stock. This thing was so bad that opening night it closed during intermission. <laughs> this is how bad this was. <laughs> but, you know, there's... Now, for instance, when they came to me with this ID, you're in the picture, I got to take the blame for because a guy walked in and he demonstrated. I was sitting with my agent, you know, and a couple of the people that belong to the agency that I'm uh, employed by or uh, guided by. <laughs> Those dirty run. <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, wait, if I, I don't mean it. They're all in it. Take my word for it. They didn't. <laughs> and uh, anyway, this guy came in and he demonstrated this game. And I want to tell you, we fell down. You know, it was a, a board, as you saw last week, and everybody stuck their head in, and they had to guess what the thing was. Well, we were hilarious, and it got contagious. We were calling in stenographers and secretaries. Hey, look at this. What we... <laughs> People were walking down the corridor with packages. We were pulling them in. Look at this thing that we got here. Now, you can't imagine how this built up, in our opinion, as a great show. It just caught on. Now, I got to show you, uh, for you people who didn't see the show last week, who weren't that fortunate, <laughs> I got to show you what it was like. Now, uh, will you bring out the tableau, please? Bring that thing out here. Just bring it up. You'll notice, ladies and gentlemen, that the stagehands have 
their back turned to the audience. Now, this is understandable. They don't want to be identified with this thing. <laughs> they have wives and children and are respected members of their community, and they don't want to have it. But this is it. Now, if you looked at that, wouldn't you say that was funny? Ha-ha! <laughs> <laughs> It's unfair to show you this. You see, somebody has to stick that. Let me show you when you put your head through the hole how funny it is. Watch this. <laughs> Up back here. Just pull it back. There you are. Look at that thing. <laughs> Take it off, fellas. <laughs> well, that's what I mean, you know. <laughs> Maybe it was because they had the cook over it, uh... General Artists Corporation stick her head in there or something. I don't know. But it was very funny when we were watching it. Now, you would think that an audience who watches a show for a half hour would walk out of the theater uh, memorizing the highlights of the show. They didn't even walk out of here humming the scenery. <laughs> but aside from that, we, uh, for instance, we got a call right after the show. And uh, it was very embarrassing. It was the Russian embassy. <laughs> they wanted a copy of this tape to show in the Kremlin. Believe me, if they show this, you'll tell the truth. <laughs> they had a bomb like this one, too. We'd listen. But Castro has a new slogan since we had this show. It's called, Yankee, go stick your head in a hole. <laughs> But... Now, you take, for instance, the reviews that we got on the show. This was really rough. And I'll tell you why. You have no idea what an actor goes through when he gets up the next morning and has to open that paper and look at what they wrote about him when he knows he's laid an egg. And it was especially bad for me, because we did the show on Friday. And at Friday, all the television columns are in bed. So I had to wait till Monday. Now, this provides bad temper, ulcers, and a third-degree hangover, <laughs> which was terrible. Now, you can say things about critics. You can say, well, what does a critic know? If he knew anything, he'd put on a hit show himself if he knows it all, you know. And you can say the same thing about ratings. Funny thing about actors, they like ratings when they're high and they hate critics when they wrap them. Well, I'm of the school that if a critic did know about how to put on a show, he would. But I'm still on the critic's side because you don't have to be Alexander Graham Bell to pick up the phone and find out it's dead. <laughs> Before I read you the reviews, I'd like to tell you another thing an actor does. He tries to find out who's to blame for this. <laughs> He's not. That's a sense. <laughs> so I'm sitting there grumbling to myself after the thing. Uh, who's to blame for this? I tried to find out whether it was the guy that uh, came up with the idea. It wasn't him, because I went along with him, calling in the girls and everything. Look at this. And uh, it wasn't the producer, because I had a little hand in that, you know. I'm very sneaky, I get in everything. The director put the show on pretty good. The writers, I wrote some of the stuff, so I have nothing to complain at. I finally found out the guy to blame for this whole thing. Just before the show goes on, there's a guy that says, You're on the air. <laughs> that is the dirty fuck! move over Castro. <laughs> no. uh, before we go any further, I'd like everybody, to, I'll tell you more about this thing, but everybody stand back right now because we have some big news for you. Ellen has found the secret that the flavor in the filter cigarette. If you know the missing word in the L&M jingle, you may be a winner in L&M's $169,000 sweepstakes. First prize worth $40,000. Includes $15,000 cash, a 61 Thunderbird hardtop, and this 